So Don told me, really, I think both interviews, he mentioned it. He seems to hold a lot of resentments regarding the songwriting in Dokken. And um, I think he had mentioned he wrote like pretty much all of Under Lock and Key. Then he said 80%. Bullshit, by the way, that's total bullshit. Did not write all the record. No frigging way. He is a valuable contributor, and he wrote much of us. Like, in my dreams, he came in with the chorus, and that chorus is great. Um, but he had nothing to do with It's Not Love, nothing to do with Unchained the Night, pretty much nothing to do with Lightning Strikes Again. I mean, you know, he did not write the whole record. He had a lot to do with a lot of it, as he should. But to say he wrote the whole thing, that's absolute bullshit. And he knows it deep down inside. It sounds like he's been trying to, like, stir up attention to himself because he's got a new record. Because it's it seems kind of like desperate and weak, I just have to laugh. I mean, I, I don't understand it. I think it's kind of weird, but I know he's resentful of the fact that we split everything equally. But, you know, if you would have broken it down to what it, what we did, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe he would get a little. Yeah, he'd get more than a quarter if it was really broken up, but not enough more to make all the noise he's making now 30 years later, 40 years later. <laughs> I know George has said that even melodies and lyrics you guys are coming up with. Yeah, we, I mean, we did, we wrote all the melodies and lyrics for Unchained the Night and It's Not Love. And I will say the song Will the Sunrise is a great example of when we do collaborate as a band because George came up with the music and then Don came up with that amazing chorus. I think the chorus on Will the Sunrise is amazing. I mean, I think the music that George came up with was amazing, but I thought Don's chorus was just amazing. And that's a that's when Dokken was working, when things like that happened. Into the Fire, George came up with the music to the chorus, and Don came up with the chorus. It's great. So everyone contributed to Into the Fire? Well, I, I, I know that uh, George and Don and I would be credited. I came up with the initial, you know, that, that's what kind of started the song rolling. So I had that and some of the pre-chorus stuff. Um, and I had another chorus for it. And then when we were recording, George came up with that chorus kind of on the spot almost. And it was really cool. And Don already, I believe, had the title into the fire. Yeah, he did, because he was doing it over my old chorus. But when George came up with the music to the new chorus, that's when the song really came together. And like I say, that's an example of collaboration where you got three guys really contributing, really focused, and it turned out great. When it comes to hits, too, it lists just you and George on Just Got Lucky. You guys wrote yeah. that with no help from Don, right? Correct. And then Alone Again, you participated in some of that? I did. Once again, Don had that great chorus. When a song starts with a chorus as strong as that, you kind of can't go wrong. Uh, and I contributed. I came up with the beginning thing, helped come up with the music for the uh, well, for all the music, but like I say, Don really did have that chorus. I give him a lot of credit for that. But let's be honest, you didn't write the whole thing. Um, I suppose he could have. He could have finished a song with that chorus, but he didn't. At this point, it's just so ridiculous to, to for me that he's resentful, but that's dark energy that he's carrying around that he doesn't need to. So, well. Yeah, when he said 80%, he wrote 80% of Tooth and Nail, and I just instantly thought... Oh, tooth and Nail?! You gotta be kidding me! That's what he said. It had nothing to do with the song "Tooth and Nail," except that we knew that that was going to be the title of the record, so we wrote the song around that. But he had nothing to do with that. He had nothing to do with "Just Got Lucky." He did make valuable contributions to "Into the Fire," and he made the most valuable contribution to "Alone Again." But then there's other songs on "Tooth and Nail" that he, I mean, uh, "Don't Close Your Eyes." He had nothing to do with "Heartless Heart." He had nothing to do with. I mean, there's a lot of songs he had nothing to do with. So for him to say he wrote eighty percent of any of the talking records is crazy. Almost all of Under Lock and Key, yeah. He said, but 80% of uh, Tooth and Nail. But instantly, I remember when he said that, I just thought in my head, well, that's weird, because I remember as a kid watching the home video, and it was you and George that had the traveling rig. Right, well, I mean, that doesn't say who wrote what. But, well, uh, I know that, but it still shows that you guys were riding on the road, and well, I would think... Well, of course we were. George and I loved it, because, and, and back on the... On the Breaking the Chains tour and the Tooth and Nail tour, we were we were, we would share rooms a lot, and so we would just bring in the gear and write, and it was great. Um, so yeah, and we did. We wrote a lot of the we we would start off a lot of the writing for the next record. I mean, we started writing on the Breaking the Chains tour. We had some stuff together for the Tooth and Nail record, and then we spent a month. George and I spent a month together, and Mick Brown was in there a lot too because Mick was actually living at George George's house at the time, and we 
we worked really hard for that month and came up with a lot of tooth and nail in that month. And uh, it was, again, it was it was very critical to the, the songwriting process of that record. With Mick, he uh, seems very resentful with Mick and saying Mick didn't do shit. But I found an old school interview with Mick and he was talking about how he would write. And sometimes you guys would be stuck on a part and he'd take it home and work with it. And I've heard George yes. mention, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was going to say, yes, that's exactly right. And it, like, for instance, on Tooth and Nail, George and I would be working all day. Mick would go out to the clubs. He'd come back at two in the morning and listen to what we did. And he'd very often have a great suggestion. So um, to say that Mick was not involved is not accurate. Was he as involved as the three of us? No. And did he get a quarter of the publishing? Yes. Does Don have a bone of contention there? Sure. I mean, I mean, if you want to, if you want to get down to it, Mick got twenty five percent and did not probably contribute twenty five percent, but he certainly contributed somewhere between ten and fifteen solidly. And when you have a band, sometimes it's better to just eliminate the arguments. It was management's idea to split everything equally because they saw all this coming, and I thought it was a brilliant idea. And I would say Don, George, and I probably all sacrificed a little bit, although I kind of I feel very happy with my 25 percent that that that's kind of about where I land in my contributions, maybe a little bit more in the totality of things. But I'm very comfortable with it. And uh, I understand where Don would be resentful about that. But I mean, after all this time, really? (laughs) 